and refreshes parts that other shows can't. <laughs> a lot of people have said to me, they said, Jeff, do you film the show in a real pub? Of course we do. You don't think they let this lot in a TV studio, do you? <laughs> I must tell you, this pub is great. I mean, we have live music every night. The jukebox isn't earthed. <laughs> but, you know, everybody who comes in here is a regular. Must be something they put in the beer. <laughs> By the way, I've had a letter come flooding in, and it says it's from uh, Miss Lovett of Sloth. <laughs> she says, Dear Jeff, you are my dream comedian. I always fall asleep during your act. <laughs> Charming. Thank you very much, Lovett. Well, we got a great show, as I said, and I'd like you to welcome one of my favourite groups. It's Show Waddy Waddy! <laughs> Enjoying a nice pint there, a lovely pint. That mind you, we've got to be careful, haven't we? Don't get hooped on the beer. I was like, me, da me granddad, you know, he died through the evil of drink. My grandma got drunk and shot him. <laughs> <laughs> they were the bad side. We're moving on now. I'm looking forward to the future. I get my license back shortly. My driving license. Had the wife when we when I lost it. You know, the wife. She was there. She who must be obeyed was in the next seat. I'm coming down the motorway, 70 mile an hour, minding my own business. She starts, nag, 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 bloody nag, nag, another way you do. I said, shut up, woman. I looked down, I'm doing 110. Me, I couldn't believe it. Too late, they're behind me. Get in. I thought, oh, well, fancy that. <laughs> I pulled the car in. And he got out and he's walking over, you know, sarcastic the way they do. He weighed the car up and bent down, put his head through the window. Which amused me, I'd not wound it down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he said, um, 
Good evening, Wing Commander. Having problems taking off all we? <laughs> <laughs> so there. What's wrong, mate? He said, what's wrong, son? He said, 110 mile an hour. Step off the car, give me the keys. Oh, I said, I couldn't have been doing 110, surely. 70 mile an hour, sir. He said, I don't argue, son. I've just followed you for three miles. 110. Out the car, keys, now. I said, there's no need to raise your voice. Maybe your tachometer was wrong. He said, there's nothing wrong with my vehicle, sir. 110, get out the car. I said, don't shout at me. I'm sure I was only doing 70. He said, you were doing 110. I said, hang up. My one leaned over. She said, officer, there's no point in arguing with him while he's had a drink. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I think that was the best part of my marriage was me stag night. I do, when you, wait, when you think about it, you know, when you weigh it all up. I mean, the lads take Friday night, all the lads come round, don't they? Half past six. Tommy, come on, son, into the pub just like this, fitted carpet so you can fight in comfort. <laughs> Drinking all night long, vodka, scotch, gin and tonic. You roll out of a disco two o'clock in the morning. God love him, he's not well. He's here, but the lads look after him. They take him for an Indian curry to settle his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you with a thought before I go for all the lads who are considering getting married. If all brides are beautiful, where do all the ugly wives come from? <laughs> See ya. Tom Pepper. Oh, Jeffrey, how old mate? Again, all the way down from the north, I've got to ask yeah. you. I mean, they say that humour doesn't travel. They say that you can tell a joke in London and it won't get a laugh in Liverpool. You know why that is? Why? They can't hear it. <laughs> Here's a lovely young lady singing a rock and roll waltz. It's Rosemary. <laughs> It's Terry Rogers and Shorty! <laughs> Thank you very much, Lewis.
ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Jeff, for that lovely introduction. I'm sick of this, I am. I, am. I didn't want to come here in the first place tonight, you know. Stuck at me like an idiot. I was going to the pictures tonight. I was going to see that film Star Wars. Have you seen that? I never knew it was a film. I always thought it was an equity meeting. Anyway. <laughs> What exactly is the matter? Well, all this going for two and a half minutes is ridiculous, isn't it? Well, two and a half minutes is quite adequate. Sure. I mean, Sebastian Coe runs a thousand metres in less than that time. Yeah, that he hasn't got two wooden legs in your hand shoved up his back. <laughs> I mean, we are here this evening to perform a ventriloquial act. Is that legal? Yes. <laughs> it sounds obscene to me. I would imagine anything would sound obscene to you. Do you not know what ventriloquism is? No, I do. Uh, no, 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 I don't. Well, I tell you. Ventriloquism is a matter of controlling the respiratory oscillations of the abdominal muscular reflexes together with the measured reverberations emanating from the solar plexus. <laughs> That's not an act, it's a disease, that is. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Repeat it for the ladies and gentlemen. Hey? Repeat it for the ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if you strangle yourself, don't blame me, will you? No. <laughs> The angelicism is not out of controlling the respiratory osculations of the abdominal muscular reflexes together with the nature of the reverberations emanating from the solar plexus and in promulgating your esoteric cogitations, articulating your superficial sentimentalities, I'd say that you were talking without moving your cake <laughs> That's very good. But uh, do you know what it means? She had that 10 quid a night and a headache in the morning. <laughs> I will give you a demonstration. You're going on strike. No, no. You see this bottle? Yeah. I have a spirit in this bottle. You're back on the meths again, are you? No, no, no. <laughs> Listen very carefully. Oh, let, me, let me out of here. I want to get out. Help, let me out of here. It's not Lord Lucan, is it? No, no. <laughs> There's nobody in there at all. He's got out, is he? No, no, no. It was me throwing my voice. And you throw your voice out of the pub? Yes, why? Because your time's up. Say good night. <laughs> good night. God bless you. Well, hello and welcome once again to Knees Up. Fantastic act you two and so lifelike. Yes, yeah, she is, isn't she? <laughs> Tell you what, Terry, what about Shorty introducing our next act? Yes, why not? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mr. Dave Wolf. <laughs> I've just come back from my holidays. I went to the Isle of Man. It's fabulous over there. 75,000 alcoholics clinging onto a rock. <laughs> I met Quasimodo over there. He has his holidays in Isle of Man, you know. Quasimodo, he never used to have holidays. But he went to see Mary in Notre Dame and he said, uh, it good, me, Mr. Murr, but I want to go on holidays, say. <laughs> and I want to go for two weeks or the fortnight, whatever convenient, or the thing. <laughs> and Murr said, I'm sorry, Quasi, but don't get the on, but you can't go. Like, this, uh... <laughs> he said, We're no replacement for. He said, Oh, it's all totty dirty, he said, not to worry. <laughs> he said, I got a replacement. Got a little brother to your tea called Donny, Johnny, Johnny Modo. And. <laughs> He said, I'll teach him how to twing the bell. So he said, fair enough, Quasi, as long as you show him the ropes. So <laughs> the next day, he's taking him up to the top of Notre Dame, to the belfry, 140 foot above the courtyard below. And he said, no, Don, he said, what you got to do? He said, you got to twing the bell like that, give it a big twing like that, and when it comes back to you, you got to put Ted down like that, and it hit you on Ted, and it go down. <laughs> and it hurts a bit, and you feel a bit dizzy, but it's all right. <laughs> So Johnny has a go, he swings the bell and it comes back and it smashes him straight in eye. Well, cos he said, no, Donny, Donny. He said, I've told you, he said, you're doing the first part correct where you twing the bell, he said, but where are you going wrong? He said, you've got to put Ted down like that, he said, put Ted. And it comes back and it hit on Ted and it goes down. <laughs> and it hurts a bit and you feel a bit dizzy, but it's all right. <laughs> So he has a gun, another guy, he swings about and it comes back and it smashes him straight in the nose. By this time, Quasi is livid. Have you ever seen Quasi livid? <laughs> hey, Ted Donny! 
Johnny, 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 baby. Hang loot, man. Did I, I've told you twice. Why don't you flip in littered? <laughs> Are you stupid? He said, you twing the bell right. He said, that part correct. He said, twing the bell, but once you've twung it, he said, I'll never get to Tyler Man and T. Douglas. <laughs> Once you've twung it, this is where you're going. You're supposed to put Ted there, and it comes back, eight on Ted, eight, go down. <laughs> and it hurts a bit, and you feel a bit dizzy, but all together. It's all right. <laughs> so he has one last go, gives an almighty swing, and it comes back, and it smashes him straight in the face. Knocks him out through the belfry, down to the courtyard, 140 foot below. There's two fellas walking past. One says, who's that? He says, I don't know, but his face rings a bell. <laughs> Thanks a lot, good night. Hey, Rose, I've been having a little think. Why don't we sing a duet? I've got a better idea, Jeff. Why don't we sing together? <laughs> she means it. I want you to tell me why you walked out on me. Lovely she is, and today she stopped me in rehearsal. She said, Jeff, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely to be back in this country. I was out in France last week. I went over on the Hoovercraft. <laughs> I call it Hoovercraft because I always pick up a bit of stuff. <laughs> and I came back on the ferry, Sea Stink. <laughs> We've been on that ferry, Sea Stink. I'm coming back into the harbour, Bel Boulogne Harbour. I'm coming back to the away day place, and I'm late for the ferry. I'm running down into the harbour and I can see the Sea Link ferry 35 yards out of the sea. I thought, rev up, do the business. I've run like mad, jumped off the edge of the harbour, I've done a double somersault, I've landed on the ferry, and the captain said, you're an idiot. I said, why? He said, we're coming in, we're late. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I love travelling on those airlines. I went over to uh, Hong Kong last week. I travelled on Chop Suey Airlines. They're great, those Chop Suey Airlines. They, their motto is, we take away more care of you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a cheap airline, it really was. I said to them, can I have some water? They said, no, someone's using the glass. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, I love those air hostesses. One of them said to me, she said, Jeff, have you ever made love above the clouds? I said, yeah, I live in a high-rise block of flats. <laughs> <laughs> we're coming into Heathrow Airport, or was it Hong Kong Airport, because we were on the outward flight. <laughs> but we're coming in, and the captain and the pilot were thick. And one of them said, my God, he said, look at that runway, it's far too short. What are we going to do? He said, well, he said, when we get down there, it's brakes on full pelt. So we've landed, brakes on full pelt. <laughs> Just made it, end of the runway, inch to spare. The captain said, my God, we're lucky to be alive. At 300 yards, that's got to be the shortest runway I've ever landed on. His mate said, yeah, and at two miles, it's got to be the widest. <laughs> <laughs> 
Can we please welcome back onto the knees up, Shawani Awani! Once more, from all of us in the pub, say good night to the viewers. Good night.